Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome to another great, great video tutorial. That's great. I get to uh, judge the tutorial that I'm making. See? You have your own website, get to do whatever you want. Not a bad deal. Okay, what we're going to be creating is an animation based on the amplitude of a music track. Now, some of you have seen the great Justin Timberlake video where everything looks like an audio waveform and he's dancing and it all goes to the music. Really cool effect. Well, in this tutorial, we're not doing anything like that. So, just want to get that out of the way. But, we are going to create a pretty cool effect based on the audio amplitude. So, here's sort of what we're going to be creating. Okay, pretty cool. Um, real quick, I'm going to change my user interface color back to the default. I just thought it looked better with the darker interface. So, Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new composition. And uh, I'll uh, just do a 720p, 24 frames per second, and we'll do 10 seconds long. Pretty good, and I'm going to choose OK. Now, we're going to be sort of learning a few things here. What a concept. So I'm going to try to take some time here in the beginning to kind of explain some expressions that we'll be using. So, okay, let's go and take our song fold.wave and drag that out to the timeline. And you can look at the waveform by hitting LL. And there it is. You can hit the period key and hear the audio. Pretty cool. And what we're going to do is extract the audio data. Now, to do that, what we're going to do is right-click on the audio, choose Keyframe Assistant, Convert Audio to Keyframes. And what that does is creates a null object that holds all of the data. So if you go to the Effects Control, you see three effects have been applied. And if we scroll down those effects, you can see there's keyframes, and if we kind of roll through that, you can see the numbers are moving. And if we select the parameter and turn on the uh, track view here, we can sort of see what that looks like. So now we have keyframes based on the audio amplitude of the song. Pretty cool. Except that's not what we're going to do just yet. So I'm going to delete that, change back to our track view. What I'm going to do is add an effect. So I'm going to choose Effect, Audio, uh, Bass and Treble. Now, ideally you want to do this in an outside program, but this should work okay. What I want to do is create two null objects, one that has the bass and one that has the treble. So what I'm going to do is bring the treble down to negative 100 and the bass up to maybe 50. And then I'm going to create that audio keyframe. Now, the thing about the audio keyframe is it creates keyframes based on all of the audio in the composition. So if you have multiple audio tracks, make sure you shut them off because it will include them in the amplitude. So now we've brought this down a little bit and we're going to right click and choose keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. And then I'll hit return and we'll name this bass. Well, bass. Then I'll go back to the track, turn the treble up to 50, and the bass down to negative 100. Then I'll right click, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. And we'll call this treble. Now, there's a lot of keyframe data for this particular track. So I'm going to delete the left and right channel and just leave the both channels. And again, I'm going to do that for the treble as well. Because some tracks have stereo and you want to use that. In this case, I'm just going to use the mixed version of that. Now, here's the great thing. Let's scrub through this. Now, you can see that these values are different because this is based on the bass. This is based on the treble. Now, I want to see what's going on with these keyframes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the treble 
null object and move it to the left and the base and move it a little to the right. And then I'm going to bring up the position for the treble. So I'm going to hit P and I'll hit Shift and U. Now here's the slider for the both channels audio. And what we're going to do is sort of extract that data. So I'm going to Alt click on position, stopwatch, Alt click on the position stopwatch, brings up our nifty expressions. And what I'm going to do is pick whip both sliders. So I'm just going to pick whip the value. And it creates an expression. And I'll sort of explain this really quick. This value is a single value. This position value has two values. It has x and y. So in order to apply the one value to the two values, it creates a variable, which simply says temp. So that could be anything. This could be x equals affect both channels slider, which means equals this 11 value from our both channels audio. And then I can change this to x and this to x. And what that says is change the value here from x comma x, which is equal to 11. So if I were to apply that, both values now have that one value. Now, that's not exactly what I want to do. Here's what I'd rather do. I'd rather type before that part value and what the value command does is simply says what is the value of the position before we apply this expression. Then what we're going to do is do value plus this uh, array and the array has x and x. Now I only want to do it to the y so I'm going to do value plus 0 for the x and x for the y or I should say treble treble. So treble equals the treble slider and now we're doing value plus 0 for x tr treble for y. No one was going to say anything about that. Okay, so now I'm going to click away and watch if I hit the space bar with no video on the screen our null objects will play back in real time. So check it out. Alright, so we're seeing a little action there and that's what we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the base layer. So I'm going to hit P, brings up the position, and then I'm going to Alt click, pick whip the slider value, and I'll just make a little room here, and we'll change the variable to base, and we'll change this to zero, and this to base. It's hard to type with the caps on. And what we're going to do is type value plus 0 for the x and this value for the y. So now if we play this back, you see they kind of move independently. So that's sort of the gist of extracting the data from the audio. So now we need to process that data into a way that's a little bit more usable. So what I'll do is alt click on the treble stopwatch. Now we have keyframes but just alt click. That brings up our expression. And the expression says to use itself as the value. Well we can change that to value and guess what? It'll still work. That is equivalent to what was there a moment ago. So I want to make that clear. Value is a way to say use the current value of the parameter. So we're going to use that. Now I'm going to show you a brand new expression that I don't think I've gone over. And here's what it is. Linear parentheses value comma 0 comma 100 comma 0 comma 500 end parentheses. So don't be uh, scared by these numbers. I'm going to explain it to you and you're going to understand immediately. What this says is to linearly change the value from 0 to 100 to 0 to 500. Which means if this value is 0, the resulting value will be 0. 
but if this value is 100, the resulting value is going to be 500. Now, these are obscure values that I just placed in here. We are going to actually use more accurate numbers. And to find those numbers, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to select the parameter, bring up the track view here, and we'll just kind of look in here closely. And what we can see is that the high value goes to about 25, and the lowest average height is probably right around here, right around 8 or 9. So 8 is the low value average, and 25 looks to be the high number. So we'll go out of the track view, we'll change it to 8, and the high number to, I'll we'll just do 50 for the sake of uh, this expression. So now, we shut the expression off. We see the value is 13, but with the expression on, the value is 63. Because remember, it's linearly taking the value from 8 to 50 and adjusting it to 0 to 500. So anything that's below 8, so if we kind of scroll through here, here's a value of 6, and if I turn the expression on, it's going to turn to 0 because it's below 8. Now, we can change that to 10, and what that's going to do is any value 10 and below is going to show up as 0. Now, if we go back into the track view, turn on the graph for the expression, here's what you see is the resulting animation. So we just have sort of extracted those high points. And we can also actually go in and adjust the expression more if we need to later. But the idea is to be able to remap the values to values that you want to use. When you extract the data from the audio, the values you get aren't always values that are going to be helpful for your animation. Glows, for example, require a lower value, and other effects require a higher value. So you want to use this expression to create a more magnified result. So now if we look at the resulting animation here, check it out. Here's our treble. If I right click, and we'll change that to blue. Aqua, sorry. So now you can see it moves a lot more than this one. And again, we can change the value to start, say, to 8.5. And watch that. Now our base needs the same thing. So what I'll do is bring up our base. We'll type in that same expression, alt click on the stopwatch, linear value, comma 0, comma 100, comma 0, comma 500 in parentheses. Now we want to find out what to make the start and end range. So we'll select the parameter, bring up the track view, and what do we have here? Low value average is about 9 or 10. High value is about 50, 60. So we'll change that to 10 and this to 60. So 10 to 60 is now going to be 0 to 500. So check it out. Now, say we think this is a little much. That's kind of a lot there. Well, just change the resulting end value down lower. So now 10 to 60 is just going to remap from 0 to 200. Now, say I want to reverse the value. Well, we'll just do multiply negative 1. So whatever the resulting value is times negative 1. And so now, 1 goes up, 1 goes down. So anyway, here's the best way to sort of extract the data is using this linear keyframe. So now let's move on to something that is a little more exciting than 2 squares. Okay, what I'm going to do is create a new solid and we'll make comp size and choose OK. You know what? Actually, that was pretty boring stuff there. Um, I actually have a story for you. It's pretty good. So I'm driving into a shopping center, just like a, like a grocery store and some other food stores. And I'm pulling in off of the main street and I'm kind of going up the main driveway. And I turn right, and there's kind of a lot of traffic in this particular area, so everyone's kind of stuck. And to our left is like a shopping center or like a, uh, it was a grocery store or something. And 
I'm sitting there listening to music, whatever, and there's a car in front of me, and there's a car in front of that car, and we're sort of just jammed up, but no big deal. And then out of the corner of my left eye, I see a shopping cart coming down the parking lot. And I see it, and I'm thinking, like, you know, i got to think quick here, and I'm thinking, okay, it's not going to hit my car, but it is probably going to hit this guy in front of me's car. And so I'm thinking, should I get out and maybe try to stop it? Or, you know, what if I try and... I don't get there in time, and then I'm probably going to look like a fool. Um, a lot of things ran through my head. And then finally I decided I can't let this happen. So I'm just about to get out of my car when the shopping cart slams into this guy's car, like right into the driver's side door. And uh, luckily there wasn't a lot of damage. You know, I kind of felt bad for the guy. I hate to think what might have happened if I wasn't there. <laughs> okay, good story, um, you know. Just uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get back to it here. What I'm going to do is add our fantastic particular plugin. So I'm going to choose Effect, Trap Code, Particular. And no, this plugin doesn't come with After Effects. But if you want to create cool things, sometimes you need a cool plugin. So here's sort of the default level that uh, creates these great particles. And what I'm going to do is shut off our null objects and rename our layer particles. And what we're going to do is go into the emitter options. Let's see here. And we're going to bring the particles a second up to like 500. We're going to turn the velocity down to zero, the random velocity down to zero, and the random motion from velocity down to zero also. So zero, zero, zero. And then I'm gonna create a 3D camera. So new camera. Looks good, uh, we'll go 35 millimeter, okay. So now we have our one little particle there that's just sticking there because we don't have any velocity. And what we're gonna do is use our audio data to drive the position of this particle. And we're going to drive the Z axis, which means forward and back. And what we'll do is bring up the keyframes for the treble, hit U, here they are. And then I'm going to go and alt click on the Z position. And that brings up our expression for that particular parameter. And I'm going to take the pick whip and we'll go down a bit and we'll pick whip to our treble slider that we've added our linear expression to. It adds it and then we're going to click away. And now, I'll go ahead and shut that and let's see what the value does for the position of the particles. So, kind of scrub through here. Now you can see the value is changing. But nothing's really happening here because the particles are just sticking there. So, what I'm going to do is take the orbit camera tool and this allows us to orbit our camera around. I'm going to click and drag to the left. So you can see we have sort of these 3D particles that are sort of in a straight line. And if I look at the animation, you can see they sort of move back and forth. We want it to look a little bit nicer than that. So what we're going to do is turn the velocity from the motion up. Maybe 50. And what that does is when the particle gets thrown, it sort of keeps traveling. So now we'll come down to the particle life, and we'll change that to about 1. So now you can see a little bit more what's happening is when the particles are thrown, they keep traveling in those directions. So next thing we'll do is come down to the physics for the particles. This is sort of like air and all that stuff. And we'll go to the air option down to the turbulent field. And this is sort of a fancy way of saying to displace the particles sort of randomly in a sense. And what I'm going to do is change the effect position and move that value up. So now you can see the particles start taking on this really unique form. And we can also affect the size of the particles. So some are big and some are small. We'll, we'll set that to 5. And we'll go ahead and move back up here. We'll change the color of the particle to like a light blue and the transfer mode to add. Looks kind of nice. 
change the size of the particle down to about four and the opacity down also. And the reason we're gonna turn the opacity down is because we're gonna turn up the particles per second. And we'll hold down shift and we're gonna drag this until it fills in. So maybe even a little bit more than that. And then we'll go back down and let's bring the opacity down even more. And the size down even. This is uh, an HD comp, so that looks pretty good. And we'll uh, see what our other settings look like. Maybe change the position up even more. And so that creates a pretty unique effect. And then we'll go down to the particle size over life. So the life of the particle is one second and we want them to start out large and shrink down. So that's sort of the idea here. Now, let's make the life a little bit longer, 1.5 maybe. And the size, I'll turn it up just a little bit so we can see it a bit more. And again, we'll increase the particles and you hold down shift and you can just keep dragging that. Basically, you want it to uh, kind of fill in the gaps there. So, but essentially that's the idea right there. And now the other thing we can do is increase the velocity from motion. And what that's gonna do is sort of let the particles flow together and it'll make it look like the particles are shooting out like energy with the beat. So I'll come back down, maybe we'll make the effect position a little bit higher. And at any time we can also go back into the treble and go into our expression and remap the value. Maybe we want it to be a bit stronger. So now if we change this to 800, the power of this is going to turn up, but then we'll also need to turn up the particles. But I think we'll go ahead and just set it to 700. And then we'll go back to the particles, increase the particles, and again, increase the opacity so that we can see it a little bit better. So I'll just try 10. So, okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, not perfect, but... I think we're gonna need a lot more particles in order to fill that in. So for now, we'll go ahead and go with that. And let's go ahead and just take a look at uh, what this is uh, creating for us. So I'm just gonna RAM preview. Okay, so you get the basic idea. It's sort of pushing the particles and the particles are inheriting the velocity from the music. So. A little different way of uh, kind of creating an animation. Now, we're going to do one more thing, and we're going to duplicate the particles that we've created. So that's the end of the particle part of the tutorial. Now we'll play with it a little more, but I'm going to duplicate this, edit, duplicate. And to this particle system, we're going to just make a few changes. We're going to change the color to green. And we're going to change the expression so I'll hit U, and we're going to change the expression to look at, instead of the treble layer, we're going to change the name of the layer to base. So remember, these are exactly the same, so I'm just going to change the name. And so now it's going to make the animation based on the base instead of the treble. Now, we want to sort of make this look a little bit more unique. So we'll go in here and we'll increase the effect position and we'll change the octave, and that's sort of the frequency, and we'll change that to two. So I'm gonna change the scale to about two. And so that kind of creates a little bit more random uh, effect here. So now if we sort of scrub through it, you can see that these both sort of, uh, you know, play off of each other. Okay, now from this frame, we can see the blue kind of goes into the right, and the green goes into the left. And the reason for that is because if we go to the base channel, we've added an expression times negative one. We've reversed that expression, so now the particles are being thrown more in that direction. So as you can see, it sort of goes with the music, and um, I created a I created an example earlier, and then we have our early example from the beginning. Um, you know, you can choose any of these colors that you would like to use, and so. I just kind of created a, I just kind of created a comp here. NBC Universal. 
Now these titles are actually all in HD, and uh, I made one for Comedy Central also. And uh, they animate. Check it out. Pretty cool. I'll even put this project file up. So uh, use it. Send me a link. Uh, you know, I'll show my wife. All right. I don't know how long this tutorial is, but it feels like it was a pretty long one. So anyway, I'm going to cut this thing out right now. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to check out the, uh, the web page, the blog. Of course, go check out our DVDs. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. But wait, there's a little bit more. Um, I just wanted to show you how to create an animated waveform, just in case you were looking to do that. So what you do is put your music onto your comp, create a new solid, and then choose Effect, Generate, or Render um, Audio Waveform. And what it allows you to do is select your audio file, and then it creates a rendering of your waveform. And you can change the color. Let's see. and the size, um, just play with the settings. They make sense. Um, if you want a longer duration, just increase that value. You can increase the samples and the thickness and the height of the waveform. And it will render it out for you. You can also select some of these other options like digital audio here. It's for the more high-tech era and uh, some dots. There you go.